Hi everyone. Welcome to Soul Treats Facebook Live. I'm so excited today. I've got wait over here Zach Hader with me today and he has such an amazing um, message for us today and it's how to cultivate love within. Um, I just want to thank everybody too before we get started the people who've sent donations already there is an open donation link that I'll be posting thank you so much for your donations truly grateful for um, your support with soul treats and also for the readers and healers and speakers that come on so thank you so much um, Zach is going to be talking about reinforcing and um, cultivating love energy within our beings uh, to help us overcome and overcome all and any emotional conflicts we face along our path. And I just want to say I've had the privilege to have a couple of chats with Zach. And Zach, I just want to take this time to thank you for being here. You're such a sweet, amazing soul. And um, I really, truly appreciate uh, the little chats that we've had leveling each other up. And um, I'm so excited that you're here today to represent love um, for planet Earth right now. We really, really need it. So I'll have you take some time to introduce yourself. And um, I also wanted to just kind of give a shout out to the group that you're in, the United um, Healing Collective. So if anybody wants to follow that group, um, it's called United Healing Collective. There's a lot of amazing people that are there. So please feel free to do that. And then Zach, while you're introducing yourself, um, I know you have a meetup group. So if you could mention that as well, and I'll be happy to post it on the screen, um, that would be fabulous. So I'm going to turn this over to you. I'll see you on the other side. And once again, thank you everybody for being here today. And thank you so much for your um, open donations that you sent. See you soon. Thank you so much for Michelle for such an amazing introduction there. And likewise as well, I've really appreciated the, uh, the conversations we've had so far. And also that Reiki session that you gave to me as well, that really helped me uh, move through some things that I was going through at the time. So yes, first of all, I would like to say, yep. Yeah, so in regards to the United Healing Collective, that is a Facebook group. It is a group that I'm a part of, and essentially the group has been founded for uh, a collective of healers to come together and to pool themselves to be able to kind of do mass healings at the same time. Uh, that's That's been the objective of it, specifically related to energy healing. So that's that. You can find that group by typing in <coughs> United Healing Collective in Facebook. And so also, Michelle, you mentioned the uh, meetup group. I have co-founded a meetup group called, uh, well, it's now called the Foundation for Personal Growth. Essentially, it's like a community-driven personal development group with a spiritual kind of undertone to it, where we look at all the different asset aspects of our life and we realize our heaven and our hell. And from that, we are able to work together in a sort of program environment where we can we we support one other person and we also we also are supported by someone else and that kind of aspect of teamwork uh, we can essentially bring ourselves up and improve our lives together so we can create the best versions of our world that we wish to see so yeah that's the meetup group you can see there on the screen that's uh, that's on meetup the best way to find that i would say right now you could look on meetup.com and type in london personal growth meetup group that is london personal growth meetup group or you can just reach out to me on facebook or here on the screen my website zachhater.com you'll be able to contact me through that if you are interested in looking more into that group so a little bit of an introduction about myself so yeah my name is Zach Hater and here today I'm going to be talking about cultivating love within ourselves to help us overcome those internal conflicts and struggles and challenges that we so often go through on our path through life on this planet as human beings 
especially within recent times. And it's been very intense for many people, including myself. I think we can all attest to that, that it's been a tough time. So my spiritual awakening started around about 2014. That was when I really had my mind blown open and started looking more into spirituality after going through the rabbit holes of like conspiracy theories and all of that stuff for a while. And I didn't really notice any repeating, well, I was noticing repeating patterns of thoughts and emotions going on within me uh, between that time of 2014 up until 2016 and then 2018. It was then during that time I noticed there was certain almost depressive undertones and also and also mental thoughts that were coming up for me that I didn't really prefer to have at that time. And at this time as well, I was still very much learning about spirituality and then learning about this need for uh, inner work and doing our emotional healing when we get emotionally triggered. But I kind of sort of distracted myself from it for a while, for a long time. I, I just thought, I got this belief in my head that, oh, we don't actually have to worry about doing our inner work that much because it's something that we don't need to worry about. It's just going to happen when it happens. We'll, we'll get emotionally triggered when we're meant to, and then we'll deal with it then. And that was this belief that I'd adopted earlier on. And it then came to a point in around about 2018, I came into this very important relationship a romantic, intimate relationship in my life in 2018. And this, this relationship was the most triggering relationship to this day that I've ever been through. And it was, and I knew about emotional healing at this time. I knew it was important for us to be facing our shadows and, and dealing with our triggers as and when they came up. But as much as I knew that, and as much as I was feeling my emotions, because I decided as a soul to come into this life as sensitive, a very sensitive person generally. And so I was facing these emotional triggers. And then the, but what I realized I was missing up until about last year was, yes, it's good that we can feel our emotions as and when they come up, these negative emotions that really almost physically hurt. And I know that that was the big, that was a big deal for me. It was just, it was constant for that year of 2018 and into 2019, it was just this constant agonizing pain in my heart <laughs> of agony. And I was in that lack and I thought, oh, all I need to do is feel out the emotion. And absolutely, that's true. You know, there is a big aspect to that. We need to feel what we're feeling. But it wasn't then until about 2020 when I really started, I got, I got a message and it made a lot of sense to me at that point. I was like, oh, so really it's just, we've just got to bring love in, right? And like, how do you love yourself? That was the question I was posed with at the time. How do you love yourself? And most people, when they ask that, they'll come up with all kinds of different ideas. They will come up and say, oh, you need to go and have a salt bath. You need to eat some healthy food. You need to get some good sleep. That, and those are valuable self-love methods, of course. But when it came down to facing those emotional triggers, I just couldn't find anything that really worked until a mentor of mine came along and started teaching this technique, which I will explain later on in this, uh, in this sharing now. And this technique that he shared was mainly about visualization, visualization of like a loving environment and feeling love within yourself using your mind. But then I then realized there was something so much more effective. And that was through affirmation. And 
essentially projecting love energy into my heart intensively as much as I could. And not only then was I feeling the emotions through, I was also then choosing the love. I was choosing to feel love over the lack, not in a way of bypassing because I was still feeling out what I needed to feel. But at this point in 2020, so last year, I'd gone through this other really intense moment in relationship. Uh, I was felt very much betrayed at that point. I thought that was what it was. And I was able to go through this phase of where I was uh, depressed for a solid two days. And even though I had all of these tools in my mind and I knew exactly what I needed to do to overcome this challenge, this, this, this depression to bring myself up, up and out of it, I decided to sit in that lack. And I know that so many people can relate to that, that we, we do, well, I do, certainly I have and still do sometimes. I will choose to kind of sit in my, sit in my pain because it's familiar is what I'm going through and I knew I know I need to feel it but there does come a point with feeling the emotion where we can just decide right I want to feel how I want to feel and I want to cleanse and integrate these emotions that I've been holding on to since childhood and beyond and so that's what I did I was able to take that two days worth of depression and snap out of it within a couple of minutes using affirmation and the emotion integrated the, I, I felt a wholeness, I felt more free than I had to, for, well, I, I just felt incredibly free in that moment. And that comes as a byproduct of combining emotional integration, emotional alchemy with this love energy cultivation, affirmation and visualization. So yeah, essentially choosing the love instead of the lack, because as human beings, we are so good at choosing lack. It's what we're used to in many ways. It's what we've been trained to do. In, in what well, at least is what I have been trained to do in childhood from a societal collective standpoint. So where has this information come from before I start diving into it a little bit more? I would say This information really has come from a variety of different sources, but specifically Archangel Michael, the Christ Consciousness, Adronus of Sirius, the Pleiadian Council, and the Arcturian Council as well, just to name a few. Because these, these, this kind of technique is not really something that I have personally seen in the mainstream arenas of therapy, whether that's talk therapy or like the general mental health arena is this this just really doesn't exist as far as i'm aware of or that i've come across whereas this information has come from the perspective of spirit of the non-physical so in that sense it is of a a lighter perspective you could say a higher perspective in, a, in one sense but it is of a less dense perspective and from my own experience and from the people I have worked with and shared this information with who have then gone on to apply it to themselves and their own emotional healing journey. It has worked really, really effectively and efficiently. And that's what I'm all about. I just want to find the most effective and efficient practices for us to be able to bring ourselves up in frequency and feel freer than ever before instead of having these emotional chains weighing us down. So a little bit about the traumas and emotions before I go into the love side of things. So there are, as I have learned and come to understand, there are three different core human emotions, and that is anger, sadness, and fear. And that all other negative emotions within the negative, quote unquote, negative spectrum can relate back to one of those three core emotions of anger, sadness, and fear. Now, 
the same goes as well. There are three core human traumas, which are abandonment, rejection, and abuse. Abandonment, rejection, and abuse. And those three human traumas are like the kind of pinnacle point of all of the different human traumas that are available for us to experience, but all of the traumas we can possibly experience can be related back to those core three. Okay. Now, all of these three negative emotions, these three negative human traumas, they are what I would, I would call lack. And what do we need to counterbalance lack? We need love. And of course, because this universe, this particular universe that we're in with its geometries and the way that it's been created, as I have learned, this universe in particular started off as feminine and the feminine represents the light. And then the masculine came in later and the masculine in that way represents the dark. And so with the masculine, the feminine being the founding aspect of this universe, we could say then that this universe is biased slightly more towards the light. So if we could imagine it on a percentage, it would be something like 50.00001% biased towards the light is this universe. And so how does that equate to love and lack as a polarization? What that means is that the love is generally going to be always be able to overwrite the lack. It's always going to be able to overpower in a sense. It's going to be able to overpower in that sense, the lack. And it's going to be able to engulf it. And it's going to be able to love it back into what this universe is made of, which is love. So now looking at relationships, of course, with our relationships are those intimate relationships that we have, specifically romantic relationships. I know in my own experience, romantic relationships are the one thing that bring out the emotions more than anything else. It is like a constant facing of our triggers or of my triggers. Every time I, well, when I have entered into a relationship, it's the triggers will come and it can often be constant as well, especially in this lifetime, because I know from my own experience, this lifetime is about ascending to a, or evolving my consciousness into a different state of being. And in order to do that, I need to bring up all of these emotions that I've been holding onto since Atlantean lifetimes <laughs> and before then. So that's quite a lot of emotions that I've got trapped inside of me. So I know that any relationship that I, in, I enter into in this lifetime, for me personally and my own path, is going to involve being emotionally triggered. Now, there's two ways that I could go about this in my life. I could either go into these, this relationship and be emotionally triggered all of the time, which I'm going to be anyway. But then I could project that emotional pain and destroy the relationship. Or I could take some time out and breathe, come into a state of calmness and feel that anger, that sadness, or that fear out, feel it out until there's nothing left to be felt until I come to that state of neutrality and calmness within. And then I can bring the love to myself. I can bring that love into my heart to free myself of that emotion. The, the relationship dynamic is triggered within me. So then I can return to the relationship and participate in it again, once again, in a healthy way. 
so really this talk is focused around that is for me personally at this time in my life especially it's focused on cultivating love within ourselves so that we can lead our best life and relationships are such an important part of human life so there we go So there we have it in terms of relationship. We can either project our pain and be the victim and blame the other person as a perpetrator for how they have made us feel. Or we can take responsibility for the emotions that we are personally feeling and take some time out. It's okay to do that if you need to bring some love into ourselves to heal the emotions and alchemize them so that we can once again participate in the relationship in a healthy way. So I want to talk about how this polarity of lack and love work together when it comes to emotional healing and emotional alchemy. There's two, two analogies actually I'd like to share. So we can imagine that that lack, say, say for example, I've got a trapped emotion in my in my heart, okay, and this trapped emotion is making me feel sad that I might be abandoned, and it's creating an illusion of a fear of a fear of abandonment. Now, let's say that this, this trapped emotion that I've got nested in my heart chakra is almost like a virus, okay? It's an interesting topic to use, actually. But let's say that this trapped emotion is a virus. Let's say that's another word could be the inner child. Okay, but in this case, we're going to use the virus. It's our ego, essentially. This trapped emotion is our ego attempting to protect us because it has been hurt before, whether in this lifetime or a different lifetime. And so what the love energy does is when we bring that love energy into ourselves, into our heart, which at that point, because that virus is there and we're feeling this emotional turmoil within us, that represents, in a sense, that we are just completely devoid of love at that point. Our love energy fuel tank is at zero and we're feeling this intense emotional pain, this sadness, this fear as well of being abandoned potentially. And so the love, when we cultivate this love, what we're essentially doing is we're bringing in white blood cells. And that white, those white blood cells are coming into our heart space, into our heart chakra, and they're encapsulating. They're encapsulating that virus that is in our heart. And of course, as white blood cells do to viruses, they eat them and they transmute that virus into a neutral form, a form that is no longer causing pain. It just becomes integrated into the whole of our body or eliminated. So the painful emotions that we are experiencing, that virus, as the way we, we command the universe to cultivate love within our hearts, which is the white blood cells, and that then heals the virus, it heals the emotion. Second analogy. <clears throat> if we can imagine that in that time, in that moment, let's say that we're just feeling sad because we have actually been abandoned by a romantic partner, just an example. And in our heart, we're feeling this great sadness. 
that this painful event has come to pass. And it's almost as if the amount of love that we could possibly feel within our heart at that moment is like the equivalent of like a small garden pond. It has a few tadpoles in it, some, some reeds, but it's small. It's a small body of water, very small. And so we're there wallowing in our pain a bit. It's not great. But then we practice this love energy cultivation exercise. And through that process, we start to bring in that love into our heart and into that sadness and into that pain. And we feel it through. We know, you know, we give it the time it needs to be felt. We don't try and skip past that feeling time because it really needs to be felt. But while we're doing that, we're bringing in this love as well. And that will only exacerbate the process of us feeling that emotion. It will actually speed up the process as we continue to choose love over lack. And so we're bringing in that love and all of a sudden this pond of water in the garden, suddenly it grows into this, into this like rather large lake. <laughs> okay. And we're bringing in this love. And at this point, we've got a smile on our face because we're feeling really good. We're actually starting to feel some progress and we're feeling better already. But there's still some pain there and we're feeling it. We're maybe just letting it out, letting ourselves express that emotion in whichever way we feel we need to without harming anyone else around us. And we're continuing to bring that love in. And before I know it, this lake of love and I've got a beaming smile on my face. This lake of love has turned into <laughs> it's turned into a giant ocean. And all of a sudden, I'm in this little paddling boat on the Atlantic Ocean. I'm swimming around in this paddling boat with my oar. I'm like, oh, God, this is a lot of love around me. <laughs> and then I decide, hmm, you know what? I'm going to go for a dip. So I put down my oar, I jump out of the paddling boat, and I go for a little swim. And all of a sudden, I'm being engulfed in this love energy. And it's so overpowering. It's so strong. It's like this, this, this pain that I had in my chest. It's gone. It cannot exist in, in all this love. It literally cannot. That lack no longer exists. It has been fully absorbed and melted and alchemized by all of this love. <laughs> so... By this point, yeah, I'm laughing. I'm feeling great. I'm doing a little dance. Whereas just five or ten or half an hour ago, I was I was crying my eyes out. How amazing we can snap ourselves out of that. Instead of going from crying our eyes out and feeling it out to then feeling quite depressed for a few days after that process, we can we can flick that switch. And we can go through this process and we can create real and lasting alchemy at least as much until the next layer of emotion comes up to be felt and triggered because that's always going to happen in this particular lifetime i know i can say that for myself we still have to go through this life there's always going to be more layers of this onion that we're unpeeling of our emotional bodies after the lifetimes of build-up that we've all that i have accumulated so i would just like to say as well that some may observe this kind of teaching that i've just given and say oh that's that's emotional bypassing well, I would say to that, that it's not because we are going in deep and we're feeling in as much depth as we possibly need to. We're feeling out that emotion. Now, of course, the thing is, we're just feeling out the emotion itself. We're just feeling it. That does create healing. And in a sense, that is all we have to do, is only feel it. But what I have certainly experienced in my own journey 
has been when I do that, not only will I have a lower vibration for the days leading after that by not bringing in the love energy on top of it, I will also experience fragments left over. It's like the emotions that I felt out. It's almost like in a couple of weeks later, they started to regrow like weeds again. And so this is why I believe emotional integration is so important, combined with love energy cultivation, because those emotions then don't really regrow like weeds quite so much. They still do in a sense, no matter what, because like I said, there's going to be another layer of our emotional onion that we have to unpeel at a later point in our journey. But the love energy cultivation, regardless, is something I would recommend to anyone because it makes a whole world of difference. So I'd like to share now a technique that I would like to share. And this technique is called the BCR technique. It is called breath, calm, and reinforcement. So BCR, breath awake, calmness, and reinforcement. So when we get emotionally triggered in a situation, no matter what the situation, we want to take our take ourselves away from that situation so that we can go into some kind of private space where we feel comfortable enough to be able to feel what we need to feel. Now, if in that moment we are unable to do such a thing, if we're able to withdraw ourselves into a space where we're able to feel out what we need to feel, we need to make a promise to ourselves that we're going to come back to that trigger later on perhaps on the same day or the day after, perfectly on the same day. And so then whether we're in that moment or we're coming back to that trigger later on, we now need to breathe, okay? We need to breathe into that emotion, whether it's in our heart, our solar plexus, our sacral or somewhere else in the body or, or, or a full body emotion. We need to be able to breathe, so we breathe. We just breathe that emotion, we breathe, we breathe into the emotion, let it expand and breathe out, just so that we can really feel what it's trying to tell us. We're not pushing the emotion down. We're too good at that. We've, you know, we've been trained, or I've been trained to do that over lifetimes, to, to push the emotion down, you know, suppress it, keep it stuck. And that's why. I'm now in the position I'm in where I'm having to experience all of these emotions and feel them out. <laughs> so we're allowing ourselves to feel that emotion. And so, yeah, through that breath, continuing to breathe and feeling out the emotion, whatever that emotion wants to do, whatever, however it wishes to express itself. And we keep doing that until we come to a state of calmness. We let the emotion exhaust itself. And then we come in with reinforcement. And reinforcement essentially is we're reinforcing that lack with something positive. Okay. This is essentially what I just explained with the, the analogies of the white blood cells and the virus and turning our pond of love into an ocean of love. This is this reinforcement. Now there's two main ways that I would suggest. The most powerful one that I personally use that is most powerful for me is affirmation. And it is very simple. It is just saying, I love you. And focusing that intention to the afflicted area, the afflicted chakra, the afflicted organ, the afflicted body part, or to your entire body, just saying, I love you. So in this case, if, if it's my heart that is in pain, I love you. I love you. I'm focusing that intention onto the heart. And all of a sudden, this flower starts to blossom in the heart. 
and that emotion really starts to be cleansed. The second aspect to this reinforcement that I would recommend is using visualization. And I've also found that it is best that these two are paired sometimes where you can combine affirmation with visualization. So bringing in that love through affirmation, but then visualizing in our mind coming to a happy space. Let's say, for example, my happy space is underneath a waterfall, okay? And I feel very at peace there and joyous and happy there. Or also in a meadow you know, with hills surrounding, there's blue sky and there's like deer there and birds flying around me and I'm in like, I'm just there and I'm kind of just flying around. That to me makes me feel good. And so that is using visualization to be able to positively reinforce essentially with love energy as well. You can also reinforce positively by visualizing the emotion as a younger version of yourself and giving them hug and embracing them and loving them in, in that way and essentially clicking the switch on the timeline and healing the entire timeline. So that's why I would suggest that for the BCR technique, which is breath work and breathing. And until we come to a state of calmness and neutrality or where we've exhausted the emotion, if we're in a very angry situation or if we're in a very sad situation or if we're in a very fearful situation, we're just breathing into that emotion, whether it's anger, sadness or fear, letting ourselves feel it out and then offering love into that emotion breathing let yourself become neutral and then offer love okay one final thing i would like to add to the bcr technique is another analogy so essentially if we take that we have if you imagine in let's say that you have a car and your car takes uh, takes fuel, it takes petrol or gasoline, right? And you have to fill it up at the gas station. You have to put fuel into your tank. And the same essentially goes for the love energy. Now, what I can suggest is, and I would recommend this to anyone, is just spending, sometimes it will take two minutes, sometimes it will take five minutes a day, uh, out of your time, just to be able to practice this love energy cultivation, just placing your hands on your heart and just saying, I love you to yourself with real intention and real meaning and doing that just for a few minutes a day. And what you'll notice is, is the amount of love you feel within yourself will increase. And it's like you putting gas into your fuel tank, your love energy fuel tank. You're filling it up each day until you're at full. And then you go about your day and generally you're going to have a good day at that point because you're feeling love inside of yourself. And then when something does come up and hit you, like something comes along and catches you, like you get emotionally triggered because you were on a high, you know exactly what it was that emotionally triggered you. So your, your love energy fuel tank gets dented a little bit because of something gets something triggers you. And then you're like, oh, okay, so I'll go and work on that. I'll go and bring love and reinforcement into that trigger that occurred in my life at that point. And then through that process of bringing more love in, you fill up your love energy tank again. <laughs> and then repeating this every day, it's going to build your love energy reserves so much over time that the emotions that you're carrying within your chakra systems are just going to be cleansed without you even really needing to be triggered that much. As long as you stay in spot, triggers are always going to happen. Triggers are always going to happen. But this particular technique, this tool set that I've just described to you is what I personally use to 
get through life at this point. It's allowing me to keep my vibration high. It's allowing me to show up when I need to. And I generally am happy and joyful because I'm able to fill myself up. I'm able to fill my own cup up whenever I need to, on demand. And especially when I'm emotionally triggered. So, yeah, it's really that simple. How do you love yourself? How do you cultivate love within yourself? For me personally, I love you. I love you. I love you. It's so powerful and so simple. And that's often the case. The most powerful things are often the most simple. And yet we try and make things much more complicated than they need to be. I believe that is part of the human condition. We're amazing creators. We like to do, we like to find the most effective and most efficient ways of doing just about everything and always constantly seeking to improve. We're one of the only races that actually does that in this universe. But you know, sometimes less is more. Back to basics. I love you. I love you. I love you. So thank you for joining me. And now I believe we're going to go to a Q&A section, segment for anyone who has any questions. Thank you for sharing this time with me. Much love to you all. Oh, Michelle, I can't hear you. Thank you so much, Zach. I'm so excited to use this BCR that you've, uh, you've brought to our attention. Um, super, super important. So if anybody has any questions for Zach, please feel free to um, post it in the comments. I see Michelle Grotmaner has, I see you, fear, anger, hurt, abandonment, and now I choose love. Oh, that's fantastic. That's awesome, Michelle. Good on you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It is a choice. But of course, we still need to feel those heavy things. But choosing love, ultimately, that's what's going to bring us to our liberation and our states of inner freedom and joy and happiness and peace. I want to thank everybody who has joined us today. Um, thank you so much for um, your jealous. time with us. And I see her question right here. I'll pop that up for you says, how long do you stay in the energy before switching to love energy? Such a brilliant question. Uh, right. So this is, this is an interesting one because what I've actually found is say I'm in the midst of, uh, <laughs> say if I'm in the midst of like crying, say, for example, I always keep going back to 2020 when I was in Italy and it was just this key point when I was in this house, I was on my own and I was fully able to just there was no one around me and I just, I just could, I could go there at this point in my life. And I just, and I was crying, I was wailing, I was full on really upset. And this has not been the only incident or time that this had happened, but I would be there and I'd be, my heart would be torn, it'd be in pieces, I'd be crying, very upset. And I would then start to be like, I love you, and I love you. I love you. And then the love energy would start to cultivate, it would start to m manifest in my heart space. And the very presence of that love energy would actually then bring up more of the emotion. And then I'd start crying even more. I'd start crying even more. <laughs> and then I'd, you know, I'd let myself feel that next wave out until that wave passes and it settles, until it neutralizes. And then I'd bring in some more love energy. I love you. I love you. And then I start crying even more. <laughs> but every time that happened, every time I went for another wave, another layer of that emotion, another, another sequence of exhausting that emotion down a little bit more, it got easier. And the less I would cry, 
and then I was able to say I love you more and the love energy would start to build more. It would start to engulf and wrap around that, that negative emotion and it would start to alchemize it. And it was, it then, it then came to this point of like, instead of me having to continue crying, it was like, ah, oh, my inner child actually felt held, fully held. Aww. Yeah, it was fully loved. And I was just, I would actually suggest you don't actually have to wait. In the BCR technique where I say breath work, calmness and neutrality, and then reinforcement, I actually say that you can just be processing the emotion, feeling out what you need to, while also bringing in love energy, because it will only just speed, speed up the process. And it may be more painful, but you, you know, you're always pushing towards that love energy. You're always pushing towards that love. And so the pain actually comes, the whole process of actually feeling out the emotions actually became kind of enjoyable to me because I knew that in a few minutes or half an hour later, I would be feeling so much better and I would feel free and I was able to just go about my life and just feel great most of the time. And if I wasn't always feeling that great after, I just needed to sit a bit more and just just really, you know, bring more love in. And that's always the answer. Is love is the cure. Just want to um, give just some more shout outs to you, Zach. If you can see down below in the banner, I've got Zach's website, his personal website, zachhater.com. But also, too, Zach is with an amazing um, Facebook group called the United Healing Collective. So um, please feel free to look that up on Facebook, United Healing Collective. And I just wanted to also just post up uh, what we did earlier, we showed you earlier, but Zach has a meetup group and I'm just gonna add this here so that he can just talk about it just a little bit more. Yeah, so yeah, we're calling it the uh, Foundation for Personal Growth. And it is, I am a co-founder of this group. It's being co-founded by myself and my friend, Chris Scriven. And essentially, it's almost going to be based on like a 12 step program, but of personal development. And so it's essentially incorporating this different aspects of personal development, where we've learned from some of the greatest, I say greatest, but we've learned from many great minds in personal development and spiritual development arenas, and combined this knowledge into like a pool into a resource center in a way and formed it. We're forming it into these 12 actions. We're not actually calling them steps, we're calling them actions. And we're essentially the first part of it is where we, a person, when they come, come into the program, it's them mapping out their heaven, all of the things that they want to be experiencing in their life. <clears throat> and then they're mapping out their hell. So essentially if, if, they didn't bother working on themselves and if they went and if their life went to total ruin over the next few years like what the hell would be like and so and so through that process we're realizing what we don't want to experience and what we do want to experience and then we have a choice of what we want to move ourselves towards and that is such a powerful thing if we can create a strong emotional charge against or around what we don't want to experience the stronger emotional charge around what we don't want is going to slingshot us into what we do want. This is like law of attraction 101. So that is the foundation of the actions. It then goes into surrendering ourselves to a power greater than ourselves, essentially. So essentially surround, surrendering our ego's will to the will of creation, the will of God, whatever you wish to call all that is. Surrendering our power to God with it, surrendering to our heart, to our spirit, instead of to our mind. And there's also this aspect to this group meeting where we're going to be doing this 
every, every week on a Wednesday, we're going to be having uh, weekly meet week, weekly meetings uh, via Zoom, where everyone can come. We'll have like a short meditation at the beginning, and then there'll be a ten minute speaker share. So anyone in the audience will will have a designated role, um, which will vary each week. So people will be able to uh, uh, kind of sign up to to give a talk. So a ten minute talk about something they've experienced and wisdom that they've that they that they would like to share about a certain topic. And then the meeting will go into everyone will have usually between two to three to four to five minutes each to be able to share their challenges and their triumphs of the week. And then the meeting ends in an open discussion. And then outside of the meetings, we're going to have uh, one person who is going to be supporting us go through the program and another person that we ourselves will be supporting to take them through the program as well. And this is a not-for-profit. Not, not uh, we're doing it entirely for free. This is my service. This is how I'm giving uh, Amazing. A, a way of my giving. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's eventually we're going to be helping millions of people. This program is going to touch the lives of millions of people because of what it is. And we, we as a foundation, we want it to be this kind of like pristine, uh, infallible <laughs> in a sense, but yet ever changing and adapting um, program that really actually truly helps people and people get a lot of value out of um, by then going through it and those who actually want to change and improve themselves and their lives and the lives of those around them. Well, thank you so much for bringing yourself forward and creating that meetup group. Um, it sounds really, really amazing. So once again, I'd just like to thank Zach for being here today and um, going, going over this just amazing message that I know that anyone can use in their life. So thank, thank you so much for, um, for connecting with us today, Zach. And I have placed down at the banner um, you can see his website that's going across the screen. Also the uh, Facebook group, United Healing Collective as well. And um, I just, another, just so much gratitude for those of you who have sent in a, an open donation. Thank you so much for uh, supporting Soul Treats and also our speakers, our readers um, that do come on in the lives. And um, don't forget each Saturday and Sunday this month, I do have, um, some readers and healers that will be on. So definitely check the schedule in the Soul Treats Facebook page. It does have a link of what's going to be on there. And November, wow, November's already booked and there's gonna be some really neat um, things that'll be coming your way. Also some new readers and healers that you haven't seen on Soul Treats. You have seen them on their own pages live, but um, I am so excited for um, not only the end of kind of this month with the other people, but also next month too. And Zach, I hope to have you on again um, one day soon because I really loved um, what you brought forward for us today. So thank you everybody for being here and thank you so much, Zach. Um, I really appreciate our connection. Thanks everybody. Likewise. Thank you so much, Michelle, for today. That was uh, really good. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for showing up every week here and allowing people to give back as well. And thank you for giving. So, yeah. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you a lot to so many people. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And um, have a great day, everyone. Much love. Bye.